and we are live hi everyone thank you for joining um we will start in the next few minutes um we're just giving people um a few seconds to just join us um but thank you so much for those that's gonna tune in today we appreciate you guys tuning in and um we hope you guys are excited um to learn from some of our experts um, so these are some of our partners that we work with very closely that we have in our session today. Um, so thank you so much for joining. Um, we really um, do appreciate you guys being here. Um, and yeah, um, we will get started officially in the next few um, minutes. We're just um, getting, um, waiting for more people to join and then we'll officially start. Um, so I am Elzan. I am the Phoenix Student Engagement Coordinator. Um, and um, I'm sure you all know what Phoenix is, but Phoenix is an online fundraising platform um, for South African university students. Um, thus far, we've been able to successfully fundraise with um, our students, with our Phoenix community, um, over 80 million rand um, since inception, which is amazing. Um, and we are constantly working um, with, with our partners, with you as students, um, to increase that number. And we just want to thank you guys for tuning in today. Um, and we hope that you learn a lot and you are able to take key points from today's session um, and use that to improve on your fundraising journey on Phoenix and even pick um, some key pointers um, today um, when you enter the professional um, working um, field. Um, so, okay, um, you know, with Phoenix, we believe as an organization um, that we should not only be assisting students um, to, with access to education, but we also would like to um, link students to opportunities that will increase their likelihood of success. Um, so today's webinar will be facilitated by Lenny Rasmus, a Managing Director and Senior Strategist at HWB Communication, which is a PR agency. And then with us, we also have Ntombi. She is one of our Phoenix alumni students. She is also a founder of her own nonprofit organization called The Mentis Arc, and she is also a PhD student. Um, so welcome, ladies. Thank you so much for joining us today. Um, I'll just give over to you guys to just um, introduce yourself. So, Lynn, you can start off first, and then we will, um, you can give over to Ndombi and she'll introduce herself. Thank you so much, Elzan. Hello, everyone. It's really good to be joining you this afternoon. And thank you to Phoenix for the opportunity to share some of the experience and the knowledge that I have built up over the past 20 odd years um, in the world of branding, PR, marketing. Um, and I'm hoping that we can do some practical hints and tips that will set you on your way to improving or polishing your personal profiles, your personal brands. And Tommy, over to you. Thank you so much, Lynn. Um, my name is Ndombi, and I'm a PhD student and also the co-founder of the Mentees Act. Today, I'll be sharing how I have continuously been working on my brand as a student, which also helped me to raise funding on the Phoenix platform. Thank you guys for joining us. Thank you so much, ladies, for that introduction. Um, so today's webinar will be focusing on personal branding. Um, and the, the webinar for today will specifically focus on how to build a strong brand with what you have. Um, so we're very excited about that. Please feel free to ask questions um, while um, Lynn and Tomi will be speaking. We will be having a Q&A session at the end. Um, so you, we, we, we will be answering any um, questions you might have. And then we also have a survey that we would like you to please complete at the end um, of the webinar or as if you maybe can only join for a few minutes um, once you've um, 
once you if you can't um continue anymore please complete our survey it is in um the chat box um and of course if you have any questions please feel free um to send us those questions um and you guys are also more than welcome to introduce yourselves in the chat box we'd love to know from which university you're from um so please feel free to um introduce yourselves in the chat box um so okay I am now going to officially head over to Lynn, um, who will be um, doing the first section of um, the session or webinar two um, on personal branding. Thank you so much, Lynn. Okay, thank you. All right. Okay, so that's me, Managing Director and Senior Strategist at HWB. Um, and I have also given some thought to my own uh, personal brand um, in recent weeks, having uh, been invited by Phoenix to chat to you today. And for me, I think if I could encapsulate really from a professional perspective, what I truly, really believe and, and what I live in my work every day is that if passion drives your ambition and authenticity underscores your actions, then success will definitely follow. So for me, uh, the contribution I'm going to make today is to encourage you to keep your eye on the future and to give you a practical guide to assess your personal brand and to implement ideas to expand and improve that brand, specifically with a view to connecting with people and organizations that will move you forward um, in your studies, in your life and in your career as well. So today we are going to give your personal brand a little bit of a makeover and some added purpose. It's about visualizing your future and staying true to yourself. And it's about authenticity. It's a word that we hear quite often these days, but it does ring true. So it's going to be easy and it's going to be fun. And we're also going to be making sure that it's obviously free. So you can find all of the resources that you need on the net or chatting to friends and, and colleagues and fellow students. So the first, uh, the first steps into to, to create your personal brand is to just say, well, the good news is that we all already have our own unique personal brand that reflects our personality, our style, our preferences, our interests and hobbies and our opinions and, and our ideas. So every time you meet someone, um, or someone sees your name or they see your photograph, they associate certain characteristics with you. And this determines their attitude towards you. So what we are looking to do is um, curate your impression that you make when you are not around. So there's a spontaneous personal brand, and that's the one that we all have automatically. It's what comes out when you present yourself to people. It's social, it's spontaneous. Um, it's fun loving, it's creative, it's sporty, and it happens without you thinking about it. The second brand that I like to talk about is the deliberate personal brand. And that's the one that you plan, that you organize, and it shows only what you want other people to see in order to create a specific impression. And this is not about pretending to be someone that you are not. It's just making sure that you choose, specifically in this regard, from a professional or a, or a student perspective, what it is that you want people to know and understand about who you are and who you are busy becoming as a young professional. And so the bottom line is it's online and it's offline. It's visual and it's verbal. But the most important thing is to know that it is incredibly valuable and you should really treasure your own personal brand and enjoy it. Enjoy working on it. Enjoy growing it. So the big thing is to make sure that you don't get left on red. So why should you make the effort? Um, what are your goals? You need to think about what it is that you want to do. You want to work hard to obtain your degree and secure the funding that will make your studies possible. You want to perhaps get an internship or a holiday job or qualify for further studies. And ultimately, once all of that is said and done and you've got your degree and your qualification, you want that dream job to launch your career. And so this is why you need to make the effort. And how are you going to get there? You're going to get there by building credibility, making personal connections. And the emphasis here is on personal, because what you want to do is create two-way conversations between yourself 
and others, and you want it to be responsive. So that when the day comes, when you have to reach out for advice, reach out for a job, um, or you want someone to respond to something that you've put out into the public domain, you want an already existing relationship to benefit, benefit you at that time. So you want to create and network with more people and organizations that can give you access to the opportunities you want. So first things first, I think it's important to finish that personal tagline. So that's going to be the one perfect sentence that explains who you are and what you believe in, where you want to go and what you offer. And it sounds like a lot and it doesn't have to be as short as uh, just do it. It can be a little paragraph, but it needs to encapsulate exactly who you are and where it is that you want to go. And the first step is for you to write down three or four phrases or words that encapsulates your personality. So the first one is really about your values. These, these are the things that you believe in, your principles, the things that you stand for and your approaches to life. Your strengths is your skills that you have at the stage, your experience, the things that you are good at, the things that you do well, and the things that you feel confident about, because it's all about accentuating the positive. And because we are often quite hard on ourselves and we don't give ourselves enough credit, get some perspective and ask a friend to help you by doing the same. And collate all of that into some, some idea, a thought to start with. The next step is to look at your field of study and consider where you'd like to work one day and look at the desired characteristics and skills for professionals in your field. And also, what do you want to achieve and what is it that you have to offer? Um, and some desktop research will also help you find the best words and phrases that you can do. So that's really what you want to do is about you first, who you are, how you feel, what it is that you want to do, and then looking at the world outside. And then the third thing is putting it all together and making up a little, a little phrase or a tagline um, that is uniquely you. So the next slide is just for some inspiration. It doesn't always have to be as fabulous as something that Oprah says or perhaps uh, Barack Obama, but it needs to be yours and it needs to explain to people a little bit about what they can expect when they meet you in person one day. One of the things that we have to do is to get ready for that close up. So obviously people, as you know, respond strongly to visual cues. So make sure that your social media profiles are visually um, appealing and that they represent who you are and what you stand for and not just what you look like. So this doesn't have to cost money at all. You don't even need a camera to do it. All you need is a really good friend and a good cell phone and you can spend a couple of hours on a sunny afternoon having some fun and creating a couple of images in different styles or different settings that will re represent who you are. Obviously, as always, some do's and don'ts. Do be bright, cheerful, dress up nicely, shine, lots of good natural light. Think about perhaps the career that you're wanting to pursue. Include that if you can in your photograph. You'll see on the left-hand side um, those two ladies. You just really want to engage with them. You can see that they're serious about their studies and they really are having fun while they're doing it. Obviously, some don'ts as well. Don't do pouty or playful. Don't be too casual or overdressed and low light and shadows. And as you can see from the examples, mm -mm, a drink in the hand is a definite no-no and having no picture at all isn't a good thing either. So even though you might be shy, please put yourself out there, choose a picture. People would like to know who the person is behind what they see. What you can also do to mix things up a little bit is to visit some stock photography websites that can enhance the visual appeal of your profiles. And there are some really excellent sites that offer royalty-free images, so images that you don't have to pay for. Um, two of them is Pixels, the other one is Unsplash, but always remember to check the usage restrictions for the pictures that you use. Sometimes the photographer will ask you to acknowledge them or just thank them publicly, and that's another way for you to be paying it forward as well. Right, the next step is to go to the profiles that you already have and make sure 
that you check them out. Give them a bit of an audit, give them a bit of a spring clean, because the past is almost as important as the future. So make sure that you go through all of your profiles, check them about six or eight months back, um, if it's possible to do so. Have a look at posts that you might want to reconsider, you might want to hire them, you might want to delete them. Um, if they're not quite spot on in terms of where it is that you want to be going um, with your brand. And if you're not too precious about your profiles and if you feel there's just too much there or you've got more than one profile on, say, Facebook or Insta or Twitter, then consider deleting either one or all of them and starting fresh. That's also an option. So there are around 21 potential platforms that you can consider. Um, and it's for professional, it's for personal, and it's for in-between. I've just selected the five most obvious ones. Social is obviously Insta and Facebook. Twitter is in between. You can kind of share professional and personal because that's a lot about what's happening in the world, what's happening in the news. So you can kind of link to both sides. And then on the professional side, there's LinkedIn, which is a professional platform where people really work to recruit business. They connect with other professionals. They find jobs. And so that's an incredibly important uh, platform for you to start exploring and building a profile on. And if you're brave, you can do a website or a blog. So if you want to explore new avenues, absolutely go for it. So once you've kind of uh, had a look and see what you've got, uh, you need to update them. So you've got to check for consistency across all of those digital properties making sure that your profile pictures are the same or similar um, across, and also making sure that your personal tagline or your motto is included as well. So we want to make sure, as we know, people look around, they either stalk you, prospective employers, uh, check you out on social media, making sure that you are who you really say that you are. So make sure that whatever they look for, they will always find the same consistent image and profile of you online. Choose a color scheme, play a little bit, um, be adventurous um, and, and change up the look and feel where applicable. Many of these platforms have got fantastic functionalities that you can use to really make your platform or your place on that platform uniquely yours. Check your contact details and make sure that you've got an email address that's easy to remember and preferably that's linked to your name. I know that sometimes it's nice to have a really cool email uh, name, but once you start moving into your professional career, it's best to keep it straightforward, sensible, and easy to remember. And also remember, messaging platforms fall into the same category, so please update those as well. Right, -o. so next step is deciding who you follow um, and who you will allow to follow you. So who's following who is um, a very important question to ask. What you need to do is look at classifying your followers and who you follow um, according to your social or professional profiles. You might have people that you really love on social media, on um, Insta, but they might not be suitable followers from a LinkedIn or from a professional perspective. So have a look and make sure that you've got the right people that you are following and that are following you in terms of moving forward. So profiles uh, you've selected for your studies or your future profession uh, and consider following according to some of these guidelines. So many of us follow international icons or companies or organizations that we admire. Um, in our, our field of business, our field of study. Um, consider mixing it up and making sure that you've got a good uh, mix across the board. Include some human, humanitarian um, causes. Look at if sport is your interest, some icons that really make a difference for you that you believe are, are notable. Um, it can be art, architecture, it can be anything. Not forgetting where we are and where we live, South African and African icons, we have amazing business leaders um, and, and, and the community and society leaders that are well worth following. Um, and I think it makes a difference to understand our context um, and engaging with our world in Africa and South Africa versus engaging with the broader global world. And those are two very interesting perspectives that can play um, against each other. Make time to search for and connect with individuals and organizations in your field of study. 
and where you think you'd like to work in future. And so that's going to take a little bit of time. So what you need to do is um, make some time every single day, maybe once a week, maybe three times a week, take a cup of coffee, take a seat, sit down and go through your profiles. Have a look at who has viewed your profile. Um, search for others. If you've seen something in the news, you've heard of someone or something, go out, find it and connect with it and make it a part of your universe. The more of it you do, the more of it will grow. So organically, it will start expanding um, and it'll, it'll grow as you go along. So it's all in the mix. It's all about uh, content tips. Um, and a lot can be said about what to post, when to post it, how much you should post or shouldn't post. But ultimately, this is up to you. And it's about what you are comfortable with. And specifically, when you start out, don't set the bar too high. Don't make it a lot of work. Make it something that you can do while, while you're having fun doing it, because that will show in what comes out on the other side. Remember to be visual uh, and write short comments or thoughts about um, experiences that you've had. Include a picture and even record a short video instead of writing something um, before you post it. Keep it short and to the point. As we know, uh, time is scarce. Um, and you only have a couple of seconds really to grab someone's attention um, to make sure that they'll stay with your post and what it is that you've got to say. And when you share something, make sure that you say something. So there often seems to be the idea all you need to do is like it and um, it'll it'll go somewhere. It'll, it'll do something for your profile. But you need to engage with your content. So if you want to like something or share something, Tell people what impressed you about that specific article or the photograph or the person or developing news because your insights show people that you are thinking about the world that you live in, that you are thinking about the field of study outside of just what you are obliged to do. And that is really what will raise people's interest in you and what will impress them about your ability to um, have an interest in what you do across the board. And make sure that what you share is interesting to other people. And so that's where it's quite important when you start following or accept followers that you keep it within a realm where you will automatically be sharing what people would like to see. And they will appreciate that about you in terms of sharing things or recommending things that you've taken some time to think about in terms of how much they would enjoy engaging with the same subject matter as you've got to do. Share your achievements. They don't have to be big for you to share. It can be anything. It can be any small success, a huge success. Share it. People like good news. They like to know that success is happening all around them because success will eventually come to them too. So share your achievements and join conversations. Very important is not just to be a spectator, but to be an engager, to join the conversation, but to join that conversation thoughtfully and carefully to make sure that you um, make a contribution. As, as with sharing, joining a conversation, you need to talk sense when you do, do decide to make a contribution. And then this one goes without saying, never ever criticize, put down, or express, express negative sentiments, frustration, or anger. It just goes nowhere. There's no point in it. And it will open up a door for you to be on the receiving end of negative inputs from other people. Um, and so if you do feel frustrated by a comment or something that you've seen, take a time out, rather step away from your screen and let it pass. You can always come back later and make a positive or a constructive contribution to a conversation that might have frustrated you at an earlier stage. So, yes, it's in the mix. Mind your manners and your grammar and all kinds of other things. Um, I've just given you two little examples of how things can go quite horribly or embarrassingly wrong. Um, and the first one is Kim Kardashian, who spelt Giorgio Armani's name incorrectly. And it was pointed out to her in front of the entire world. Um, and what's important to note about this is that her initial post got quite a lot of engagement. But when they responded, which included the correction to tell her that Mr. First, uh, Mr. Armani's first name is Giorgio, that post got even more engagement. 
And so always take a moment, look at what you've put down in writing, what the picture looks like that you've posted. Five, four seconds, just check it out. Make sure it's ready to go before you do press send um, or post. And then the second one is also quite important. Um, hashtags are obviously it's a it's a part of the way that we talk it's a part of the way that we write and we often cotton on to them without necessarily thinking about what sits behind them what lies underneath and so the second example is a bit of a cautionary tale um about giorno's pizza who used a hashtag why i stayed um as a marketing and a sales trick to say well you stayed because you had pizza but they didn't think about where the hashtag originated from. And the hashtag originated from a campaign where women shared um, very emotional details about why they stayed with abusive partners. And it was all about domestic um, abuse. And Giordano's Pizzas did not think or check what it was that they were cottoning onto. And that not only was quite offensive and hurtful to many, many thousands of people, it was obviously a huge mistake and a very embarrassing one as well. So always take a moment to think about that, um, that hashtag you're using, um, what are you posting, is it correct? And even as you see, your spelling can uh, trip you up. So last words from my side, it's just really about being yourself, being the best you that you can be and finding your voice. Um, and also remember that if you are new to it, if you're not very experienced, you're obviously going to be learning a lot and you can learn through observation. Learn through checking out other people's profiles, looking at the people that you follow and the people that follow you. Look at what they're doing that you like that's good, that works, what gets engagement, what doesn't get engagement. And then also remember that you are an example for others. So you will eventually teach as much as you learn. But the important thing is that you enjoy it um, and that you have a good time while doing it because that will show in what you deliver. No, I'm on mute. Sorry. Um, thank you so much for that, Lynn. Um, I am sure the students enjoyed um, everything that was mentioned today, you know, from them um, giving their personal brand a little makeover and adding purpose to um, easy and fun ways to grow and manage your personal brand that you already have. Um, so thank you so much for that, Lynn. Um, and next, um, we will be having Hum um, who will be introducing herself shortly. Um, I just want to thank everyone that, that signed in now, guys. Thank you so much for joining us. Um, we just ended our first section of this webinar. If you guys have any questions, please feel free um, to send those um, questions in the chat box. We will be having a Q&A later. Um, so if you have any questions, questions please feel free to let us know and we also have a survey we would like you to please complete um at the end of the webinar or you know once you need to maybe sign off please complete it give us feedback we truly value um your feedback and we would like to use that information to just improve on future webinars so once again thank you so much lynn i'm going to hand over to Tombi now Thank you so much. Hello. <laughs> Thank you so much, Elza. Thank you, Lynn. Okay. Um, my name is Dombi, and I'm a PhD student at UP and also a co-founder of the Menzies Arc. So the Menzies Arc is a non-profit company which exists to increase the number of public school learners who qualify to study in high institutions with bachelor passes. Next slide, please, Elza. Okay, uh, today I'm here to talk about how I continuously uh, build my brand as a student. So one thing that I usually do, I get involved as much as I can. Uh, so I've been a tutor, I've mentored, I also started my nonprofit company called the Mentees at while in university also was a Phoenix student ambassador in 2019. I also entered two poster competitions during my MSc in 2019 and 2020, 
which I won. So in 2019, I came second. And in 2020, I came first. And getting involved has helped me build various skills. It has helped me to collaborate better with other people, to communicate better, and has also helped me realize skills that I didn't think I had. For example, I didn't know that I could uh, create, design a poster and actually uh, win. So that helped me a lot. So uh, next slide, please. So another thing that I do and I continue doing is to fix my online presence. So it's easy as students or as people to shy away from social media and say, okay, I don't want to be on social media. Although social media brings a lot of stress, it has a lot of good that it can bring. So I updated my online profile, updated my online bio profile, meaning I updated my pictures. So my online bio also updated. I wrote something. So when people go into my social, they know what I do and what I'm doing. And uh, through updating my social media accounts, I um, was able to raise money for my uh, registration because when I started for my MSc studies, I didn't have any funding. I started in June, so I went into Facebook and then I asked people to donate 50 rands for me in order to raise money for my registration. So if my social media um, profiles were not updated or I was posting things with, that were not resonating with my values, I don't think I would have been able to raise um, money for my registration. And also throughout my MSc studies, I raised money through um, Phoenix platform. So that helped um, a lot because through Phoenix, you create an online platform, a profile on their website, and then you can share it on social media. So if you don't have a social media platform, it's going to be hard for people to actually donate and help you raise money for your studies. A funder also found me on Facebook. They messaged me so for an engineering company to ask uh, to donate for me. So if I was not on Facebook or I, I wasn't really present checking my profile, I wouldn't, been a, wouldn't have been able to raise money. So social media is very important. So if you don't have to be posting every time, just need to be sharing valuable stuff. Your profile needs to be updated. So that will help a lot. Next slide, please, uh, Elza. So another thing that I do is to build meaningful relationships with people that I meet. So uh, with the mentees arc, we have mentors. So those mentors, um, my previous, uh, so I went to university with a GCT. So if I didn't have a vulnerable, uh, valuable relationships with them, I wouldn't be, or wouldn't have been able to work with them. So making sure that you have good relationship with people that you meet is very important. Thank you so much, guys, for your time. You are muted, Elza. I'm so sorry. I'm so sorry. Um, thank you so much, Ntombi, for that um, and for just sharing your story with students um, and um, for telling them how you were able to, you know, align your brand and your values and show that through social media. And that's how you were able to, you know, to get um, funders to back you, um, and not just for your registration fees, but even when you were fundraising um, um, 
on Phoenix. And I'm sure you use those contacts um, when you started with your own nonprofit organization, um, just so that people um, can assist you to improve um, on, you know, how um, how you are able to manage your nonprofit organization. So thank you so much for that. Um, we'll be um, now going into our Q and A session, um, and you guys are more than welcome to post any questions that you might have um, with us for for Lynn, um, for Ntombi, or even for me, if it's with regards to Phoenix. And then we will answer those questions um, for you guys um, in the next session. Please also um, please remember to answer the survey that we. Just post it again um, in the chat box. We would just like your honest feedback on today's session. Um, and yes, guys, if there's any questions you have, please feel free to ask us. Um, and now is your time. We have a, a, a founder of a PR agency here with us, a director um, for HWB Communication, um, who's been in the business for over 20 years. And then we also have Ntombi, who's been a, an amazing um, Phoenix ambassador, who founded her own nonprofit organization, and who's also currently busy with a PhD um, at the University of Pretoria. So please feel free to ask us any questions you might have on how you can um, build your brand with what you have. So um, um, I've actually got a question for Ndombi, if I may, Alzan. Um, yes, Len, you are more than welcome. No, no, I'll, to I'll kick off the questions <laughs> and I'll give people time to think about a question. Ndombi, obviously, um, for me, it's, it's part of my work and my profession, and we often post and create content plans for people that we post. But as a student and, and obviously as a busy working person, I, I can see that you've got a tremendously fantastic profile. Um, where do you find the time to do the posting? Do you have a specific time during the week? Do you just do it on the go? How does it work? Thank you for your question, Lynn. Uh, so what I used to do is to use um, later. So with later, you uh, plan ahead what you want to post. So if I find like Saturday afternoon, so I'll plan for the whole month. If I I usually post it like twice a week. So I'll, so twice a week, that's like eight times a month. Mm -hmm. So in that way, I can do other stuff. Well, my I am able to post even though I'm busy. Yeah, I think that's that's yeah. quite interesting. Is that you made the time to schedule your posts so that it mm -hmm. can happen without you necessarily being there or needing to remember it, and then if little bits and bobs pop up in between, you just post them as you go. Mm. Yes. I think that's a really good way to go about it, um, especially if you have a, a hectic schedule. I mean, students are um, now with online learning, I've, I've seen that the, the amount of work has increased significantly. Um, and, you know, there is, you are at home, there's maybe chores to do, um, you, you have to still spend time with your family, your friends. Um, so maybe doing something like that can really assist students on just building their brand online um and you know making sure that that aligns with the values so that they are able um to have that professional um profile out there um because that is ultimately what recruiters are going to look at um once they need to enter the job market um so i see we do have some questions uh, it's more phoenix related um so i will answer those so the our first question is from Husking. um i do have a profile but my question is how do i raise money then so um Husking, i um so if you have a phoenix profile that means you are a live student um, I suggest you get the first one handed guide um, from our student support team. Um, you can just request a copy um, by email to support at phoenix.org. Um, and then that um, uh, first 100 guide will be sent to you. So the first 100 guide is uh, literally, it's based on tips, um, not only from our internal
funnel team, so our fundraising team, our, our marketing team, but also from real students with um, their stories of how they were able to, to raise their first 100 rand um, on the Phoenix platform. Um, so please um, have a look at that. Um, and, you know, it just falls with everything. Um, our first 100 guide is built on three, um, basically, um, um, three um, chapters basically that is focusing on you know different things that you um, need to do in order for you to um, have a successful fundraising campaign and if you do have any additional questions um, you can just always um, include that in your in your email to our support team we are always happy to assist you and then we also do have some um, webinars on our Phoenix page on how to crowdfund um, especially for your Phoenix profile um, so you can check that out as well. Um, it's on the, the Phoenix Facebook page. So if you have any more additional questions, please feel free um, to let us know at uh, support at phoenix.org. Um, okay, so can we have the next question, please? Um, so this is from, from Chantal. Hi, Chantal. Um, I'd like to know if you clean up your Facebook profile, but you're still playful and full of jokes when you're in a Facebook group, will that be a problem? Um, so, Lynn, I think that question is for you. Sorry, Lynn, you on mute. <laughs> uh, no, thank you, Chantel. No, that's definitely not a problem at all. I think the general guidelines, and maybe Ntombi can chip in here as well, the general guidelines is to steer clear of politics, steer clear of religion, um, foul language, dirty jokes and anything that your common sense tells you might offend other people and that's really the only guideline that you need to have i think as i said earlier on the point is not to pretend that you're something uh, someone completely different from who you really are it's important to show people that you enjoy life that you're good for a joke and that you do enjoy things like that but just kind of those common sense guidelines that tells you um, what you should and shouldn't say so i suppose um if you can't say it to your mom maybe think about it twice um, and Tumbi, do you have anything to add on that? I agree 100% with Liv. So it, you should be engaging with things that go hand in hand with your values. You can laugh and share jokes, but if it's something that doesn't go hand in hand with your values and who you are as a person, I don't think you should engage with it. Hmm. And I mean, um, that's some really good pointers um, from both Lynn and Tumbi. Um, so if you can't say it to your mom, maybe you shouldn't be posting it on Facebook or on Twitter or on Instagram. <laughs> so, okay, next question, please, Nabila. Um, so, okay, the next question is how can I um, become a Phoenix ambassador and what benefits benefits does it entail so um our phoenix ambassadors so we currently have 55 ambassadors from 23 out of the 26 public universities um and applications for our ambassador program normally open in um october and then it's open until january so in october um you are more than welcome um to um, apply to be part of the Phoenix Ambassador Program. So our Ambassador Program is basically you are an on the ground and an online ambassador for Phoenix. Um, so anything Phoenix related, you are involved in our, our Phoenix ambassadors are also our go-to um, group, uh, focus um, group. Um, if we need any additional information on students, um, they are also our first people we go to when perhaps there's um, there's a radio interview, there's a TV TV interview. Um, you also, once you are an ambassador, you also get some student activity points, which um, obviously if you are a Phoenix student, that increases your likelihood of getting um, funding from our pool fund. Um, and all of that is covered in our first 100 guide. So if you are a live Phoenix student, you are more than welcome to request a copy from support at phoenix.org um, and you can read all about it um, in the first 100 guide. And then 
to become an ambassador just remember applications open in october so just come back to our page um and then you are more than welcome to apply for the program as long as you are a registered fee, um a registered student at a public university so okay um yes i answered um two questions in one um so yes you need to have need to be a registered student to be a phoenix um, student ambassador so you need to be registered for the current academic year um whether you are registered full-time or part-time but for that year you need to be a registered student at a public university um is there any more questions um that we, you would like us to answer with regards to your online presence um with regards to you know how how if um you want any of our speakers to elaborate on what it is that they were speaking about i know lynn made some good pointers um earlier while she was talking um about you know how to give your personal brand a little makeover and how to visualize your future and the steps that you need to take in creating the right personal brand and Tumbi also quite, covered quite a lot um she told you guys her story um and everything she did um on how to um not just build her brand but also how she fixed her online presence and made sure that her online presence represents her values um and of course to always build meaningful relationships um with everyone you meet so although i, I know as a student I sometimes might feel that you know maybe i don't have a network i can build with but you know engage with um your fellow classmates with your lecturer if there's a program on campus, um, join that program. If the university is having webinars about a certain topic and you're interested, join it so that you can be connected to other opportunities and you never know what it might lead to. Um, so we have another question. Can Tumbi speak to the benefits of being a student ambassador? How did she carry the brand? Wow. Sorry, Tumbi, you on mute. Yes, thank you, Kara, for your question. Uh, there are so many benefits of uh, being a student ambassador. So when you're raising money through uh, the Phoenix platform, one of the benefits is also uh, that adds to your points of being able to be donated to as a student ambassador. And it also pushed me to be a better person, a better speaker, because I was invited to speak in one of the student engagement. I was also invited to represent Phoenix in some of the events. Um, I also shot a video as one of the student heroes of Phoenix. So it also pushed me to try to think some things new as a person. So there are so many benefits of being a student ambassador. It also added to my brand. So I'm also invited in this event because I was also a student ambassador of Phoenix and also of the person that I am and how what I represent. Yeah. That Thank is you. a perfect answer. Thank you so much for that, Ntombi. Ntombi also won. Ntombi, you can brag a little. Ntombi also <laughs> won our um, Student Ambassador Award of the Year in 20, was it 2019? I think 2019. Yes, yeah. she also won um, the award for being uh, the best um, Student Ambassador for Phoenix in 2019. Yeah. Um, so, if you put in the work and the effort you know there's lots of benefits you can get from being a student ambassador and not just in you know what you can get but also in the softer skills that you can learn through being in an ambassador program whether it's an online program um or whether it's a face-to-face -face program but i mean most programs now um has gone um virtually and even our um phoenix ambassador program is now a virtual um online ambassador program um so yeah if you guys have any more questions with regards to the phoenix ambassador program you are welcome to post that in the chat um but you also can ask us more questions about the webinar we just did um so there's another question um can you still raise funds i i, 
and the phoenix of the u have graduated and not planning to study further so you can definitely still um, re, um create a profile on phoenix um after you've graduated from your university if you meet the requirements so the requirements is that one you need to have studied at a public university in south africa Two, um, you need to be a South African citizen, permanent resident, or an asylum or refugee seeking status student. Um, three, um, you also need to have a household income of below 600,000 then, but if it's above that, you can dispute that. But that is um, the, the criteria um, that you need to meet in order for you to create a profile on Phoenix and then fundraise for your outstanding university fees, whether that is historical depth or current dip, um, as long as you still owe it to your university that you studied at. So say, for example, um, you know, you've graduated, but now, unfortunately, the university has handed that debt over to a debt collector, then unfortunately, you won't be able to use Phoenix um, for to crowdfund towards your outstanding university fees. But if you still owe the university and that amount reflects on your fee statement and you meet the other criteria, um, you are more or requirements, you are more than welcome um to create a profile on phoenix um so guys i think um that is our last question i would just like to thank you all um oh no there is one more question um so okay i think we'll take two more questions and then we will end the session so we have another question what are the simple steps one has to follow when raising funds after creating a profile so okay bongani thank you so much for that question um so the simple steps is one you need to make sure if you are live in each student you can um the first 100 guide would have been sent to you but maybe you must have or in your spam box you can then request a, a copy of our first 100 guide um, from our student support team at so you can send them an email at support at phoenix.org and then what you what you can also do is watch our other webinars um, on our phoenix facebook page on how to crowdfund um, for your university fees so we do have webinars specifically focusing on crowdfunding so if you'd like to know more please watch those webinars um that's the webinars we really unpack um you know how to crowdfund and using your profile we have our amazing fundraising team um that's really um that really gave their best and that really broke it down and gave the real examples um and the expertise so please watch those webinars um where we have specifically unpacked you know crowdfunding on phoenix um so we can have one more question um and then um we will end our q a and bongani if you have any more questions you can also um in that same email after watching the webinars um when requesting the updated first 100 guide if you might be missed it you are more than welcome to ask those additional questions um but you need to please watch those webinars first get those pointers from the experts in the crowdfunding um, space. I mean, with Phoenix, we um, together with not just our Phoenix community, but with uh, with our, our other stakeholders, with US students, we have been able to raise over 80 million rand on the platform. Um, so watch those webinars, it's filled with tips um, and real examples from students that you would be able to use. Um, so we have time for one more question before we um, end of the session, but I would just like to thank you guys so much for joining today. We really um, enjoyed the session with you guys today. Please remember to complete our survey. We would love to hear your feedback um, on the webinar we did today. And um, Ntombi, um, one of the comments, um, it's also Ntombi, she says, um, you look very familiar. She thinks you guys went to um, the same high school. Um, so you see how easy it is to connect with people um, from your past on social media. 
um, and how powerful that is. Uh, this is now a real life example of how powerful social media can be and how you can be reconnected after years. Um, so thank you so much for that comment. Um, if she looks familiar, I am sure you guys then went to the same high school. Um, but thank you guys so much for joining. We hope you enjoyed the pointers um, um, and key tips from Lynn and Ntombi today. Um, if you have any more questions on today's webinar, please feel free to let us know. Um, and we are feeling more glad to get back to you. Um, we also have a full presentation available um, that HWB um, with Lynn uh, created. Um, so if you guys would like to have a copy of that, um, where we just unpack a bit more um, on what Lynn spoke about today, you are more than welcome to send an email to support at phoenix.org and we'll gladly send you um, that presentation. It's not the presentation we presented today, but there is another full presentation, HWV Communication did, which is a PR agency, so it's experts in the field of how to brand yourself. So thank you guys. So so much um, for joining today. I see we had lots of students from all over. We had students from University of Pretoria, students from University of Limpopo, from Fort Hare University, um, from Northwest University, from, from Twane, um, University of Technology, from Durban University, Durban University of Technology. Thank you all so much for joining. Um, and we hope to see you next week in our next and our, lo our last and final series for um, webinar for this series. Um, so we will see you guys next week. Um, and the, um, please remember guys, the survey is in the chat box. We've also pinned it. Um, so you guys are more than welcome to um, complete the survey and give us your honest feedback so we can just always improve on our future webinars so that you guys can use the helpful tips um, and so that it can really um, just help you improve, not just on your fundraising skills, but also any uh, additional other topics you would love us to cover. You can then make that recommendation um, in the survey. But thank you guys so much for today. We really enjoyed it. And once again, thank you so much, Ntombi and Lynn, um, for joining us with today's session um, and just um, sharing your skills with our students. We really appreciate it. Um, and yes, if they, if you guys have any more questions, please feel free to let us know. Um, so thank you guys so much for today. Thank you, Elzon, and thank you, Ntumbi. Um, I really enjoyed um, hearing from you as well. You really have an absolutely inspirational stories. I just want to say good luck to everyone who joined today. Enjoy, have some fun with your profiles, and my very best wishes for successful studies for all of you. Thank you so okay. much, Lynn. Thank you. Thank you, everyone. Goodbye. Bye-bye.